Welcome everyone to this week's video. Today we are on Fish Friday number 183 and we have a good one for you today. Today's fish is one of those fish that you've definitely seen if you've been involved in the aquarium trade. It is incredibly popular and rightfully slow. So let's do some educational uh, stuff on this fish. Today's fish that we're going to be talking about is... Bam! The Peacock gudgeon now the peacock gudgeon oh sorry the there we go our scientific name tate erndina or tatern tatierndina tatiernida tatierndina oscillicata again that's tatty tate erndina oscillicata Really difficult one for me to say. Um, it is an interesting fish in its own right in that it is the only member of its genus, which does usually point to it being a very unique fish. Um, it is part of the family Eleotridae, uh, sorry, Eleotridae, Eleotridae, um, which is the family of sleeper gobies. Um, it is endemic to the eastern, pop, eastern part of Papua New Guinea, meaning endemic remember endemic means it's only found natively in that area of the world it's very very small range it is found in well vegetated freshwater and streams and rivers i believe i read somewhere that it's the lowland streams and rivers but it is found there um there's usually plenty of hiding spots where these things are found but they are really associated with having swimming in loose shoals meaning they're slightly schooling i wouldn't call them a true schooling fish but they usually hang out four five ten um they're near each other they're watching each other but they're not exactly schooling together now this is a small fish um it reaches to lengths of a, up to about 7.5 centimeters which is about three inches and males are slightly larger than females. Females stay around five centimeters, two inches. Um, so this is definitely one of those sexually dimorphic species. So you can tell, if you know what to look for, you can tell males from females. Um, now this fish does have this elongated second dorsal fin. Um, you can see the first dorsal fin here, but the second dorsal fin is separated but very elongated it encompasses most of the body and then you have almost an equally long if not exactly equally long anal fin right here very very elongated and it's very squared um i should have had a picture you can kind of see there but here's a good picture you can see how it's almost very squared off a right triangle sort of um fiasco now they not fiasco it's fin shape now they do make it um, significantly larger. Uh, if they extend it, it can be much more squared off, but usually you're gonna see them much more like this. It does have this rounded caudal fin, um, but what's interesting to note is another name for this fish is the peacock goby. We've talked about gobies on the channel before, but a very important characteristic is it does not have a fused pelvic fin or fins um gobies true gobies have fused pec uh, pelvic fins that allow them to create a little bit of suction to allow them to stay on the ground so very important to note this is a gudgeon not a goby um so please do not call this a goby or you can i mean common names are common names um i did talk about the differences but that there are differences between males and females the biggest difference than something i've always used is males have this nuchal hump right here um you can see here this one doesn't really now this is a bit of a um might be a juvenile it's a little uncolored it looks small so this might be a juvenile but i would say that this is a female but for sure you go to this one this is for sure an adult female and you can see that there is not that hump that goes across there 
And traditionally, females are a little less colorful than males. It's not 100% of the time, but traditionally, that's where it's going to sort of fall. But as you can see, even though they're not maybe not as colorful in this picture, it's still an absolutely beautiful fish. It's got this bluish and silvery body shape, a little bit darker head. It's got these reddish orange stripes and bars going down the side. The fins have these red stripes as well going to a bright yellow to almost an orange flaring right at the tip. Um, absolutely beautiful. And you can even see that on this, this, the, this fish's fins are just absolutely striking right here. You got these spots here with the yellow and the orange. Um, a lot of people love this fish's coloration and rightly, rightly so. Um, a lot of times they'll actually have these sort of sunburst pattern from their eyes. That doesn't seem to be 100% of the time. This one's more of a vermiculation sort of thing. But you can kind of see that it's sunbursting from the eyes. Um, but another good characteristic and something I hope you've seen this is this actual spot right here. This dark spot at the caudal peduncle is very indicative of this species. I'm not saying that this, but when you combine it with the other characteristics, the caudal peduncle spot is pretty dang good, especially when you consider that the scientific name or the specific epithet of the scientific name, which is the second word, is ocelacata, which is literally saying oceli, so eye spot, at the caudal peduncle so pretty pretty indicative of this fish now this fish is a very peaceful fish very very peaceful de demeanor and it is omnivorous it actually feeds using suction feeding no feed on insects and insect larvae smaller things um, small crustaceans small polychaetes and worms um, but they're kind of whatever they want and they are a demersal fish meaning they're staying at the bottom so they're really rooting around in gravels and the roots of plants and stuff like that um, so when you combine that small size bright coloration the fact that it's omnivorous and it's very peaceful it's no wonder that this fish is very popular in the aquarium trade and make no mistake it is you can find these in probably most fish stores um, you can probably find them for around five dollars um, so even though this fish has a very small range that it's endemic to make no mistake this fish is not necessarily hurting in terms of its overall population it's not really in danger of going extinct now in its home range it does have some issues with um development and farming practices there's no way to deny that um you know it's it's beautiful and it's probably was heavily collected for the aquarium trade but they do seem to reproduce well and fast even with these potentially um habitat straining uh, factors now for the interesting fact that we're going to end the video on is actually about their reproduction and it's a very specific part of the reproduction that really kind of is it's very weird for me and i don't know how to say it um now the peacock gudgeon is a cave spawner there's no denying that they find cracks caves crevices and then the male will actually swim at the entrance and keep flaring their pectoral fins at females and even if the female isn't immediately receptive they'll actually go over there and try and nudge the female into the spawning site the female either agrees or doesn't agree um, if she agrees to spawn then she'll lay about 50 to 100 eggs and she actually sticks the eggs to the ceiling um, of the cave or crack or crevice that they're in now this is where I have some issues going home from here. Almost all instances that I have found in research say once the eggs have been laid, the male kicks the female out, literally chases her away, and assumes all parenting responsibilities. The male then fans the eggs with his fins for a few days keeping them well oxygenated and make sure they're cleaned off, no fungus, no decaying eggs around there. 
and then after eight to ten days the eggs hatch and the male leaves around two days the larvae become free swimming and in about six months they're ready to reproduce their i don't know on their own that is the general rule of thumb i found throughout numerous sites and blogs is the male kicks the female out and um once a fryer done he's done however i did find one literally one that say both of them uh take care of the uh pay, take care of the young it happens there's usually one or two out there that's not there but the male fans the eggs and then once the eggs the eggs hatch the male leaves that's the kicker and it's interesting to me and maybe it's not fully mis misunderstood but on the wiki P wikipedia page for this fish um there's this picture right here a male peacock gudgeon guards his young now all the research including the wikipedia page and that's where i got most of my re reproduction facts um it's pretty prevalent throughout so it's not like it's you know just a wiki article but the male fans and then leaves but even on the wikipedia page there is a picture of the male guarding the young fry these eggs are hatched um at least i believe so maybe i'm completely misreading it and those are still eggs and they just lay excessively clear eggs um oh my goodness you know what i might have been wrong those might still be eggs laid on the underside of the leaf i thought this up here was a reflection but now i'm kind of wondering if those are just different eggs huh well it's still an interesting reproduction fact and i'm sorry i thought these were fry um or larval fish but the more i'm looking at it the more i'm like i think these are just eggs and their eggs are excessively clear and the male keeps the track of them so oh well, there you go the interesting fact of the video is ping make it an interesting fact and it was he was wrong from the get-go well still i hope you enjoyed this fish thank you guys so much again i really appreciate it hope to see you again if i don't please be safe have a great day please leave a like comment subscribe if you do i'd really appreciate it hope to see you again if you'd like to support the channel please click the link down below it is by no means expected but very much appreciated regardless take care of yourselves take care of your loved ones and peace